Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make the uh, the Halo 3 Season 6 back attachment ats. Pulowski, I believe it's called. Pulowski ats. So anyway, let's just get into the video. So I have uh, made the template and you can download it and follow along. So download it from the description. It is free from my website. So anyway, once you've done that, print it out on four pieces of A4 paper. I provided a PDF for that so you can be able to join with me. So once you've done that, cut it out, glue it together and you should have a nice template to work from. We're going to cut through these two lines as precise as you can and then we are going to move on to placing the template onto the foam. These ones will all be the same so we're going to stack them together. So we will need three to get the required thickness we need reason why we're using three layers is two of them are going to be the left and the right layer and there's going to be a middle layer what's going to be at the core and that's where we're going to put like a rod or like a dowel in there to give it some strength so do this three times and we'll come back So as you can see, we've done it three times and now we're going to move on to the axe head. So we stuck the template back together and if that makes sense, we're going to cut it again. So now we've got two separate pieces again and we've got an axe head. So we're going to trace the axe head twice and make sure to mirror it. So after all that, we are going to cut it. So we've got three pieces to cut out and two pieces of the axe to cut out. So we're just going to do this as, you know, as carefully as we can. You don't have to do it all one go like me. You can you can take your time. The better the the more time you put into this, the less time you've got to tidy up later. And now we're gonna cut the axe. So same as before, but on the tip of the blade, we are going to do a inwards 45 degree angle cut. So don't be scared to do it. As long as you've got a sharp blade, you should be able to do it. So I'm going to do it right now. So see, I'm putting it at a 45 degree angle. No zigzagging or soaring motions. Just one nice clean cut. You can do that. Just have confidence in yourself. So you want to get your rod or your dowel or your PVC pipe or wire. And you want to cut room for it in the middle. So use the ugliest piece you can find out of all the three ones you cut and use that one as the middle one. So you're going to use this, a pen, just to get the general shape. Remember at the bottom of the grip, there'll be a circular hole. So make sure you don't put the rod there. Otherwise you're going to, it's going to, it's not going to look good. <laughs> so make sure you use a ruler and cut it out. It will be a bit flexible and a bit flimsy but don't worry once it's in our foam sandwich it will be fine. Do a quick test fit see if it kind of stacks up nice and smoothly and that's how you want to glue it together. So disassemble it and start putting the glue on. We are using contact cement. You can use your favorite brand whatever brand you want as long as it's contact cement. A lot of people in America use barge cement, that's contact cement, it's just a brand name, use whatever you feel comfortable using. So I am using a chip brush to put this on, these are disposable metal brushes, very very durable. And I'm going to start just, just dousing it all on. And we are going to wait five minutes between the layers to dry, and then we're going to stick it together. So I will be using a sheet of brown paper. Just make sure you've got something to stop it from sticking together all at once. You want to carefully do this. So what I'm going to do is start at the top and then I'm going to match up the sides, the front and the back, very carefully and slowly. There's no rush unless you're fast forwarding like me, but I'm just making the video, so it's all right. So once you've done that, make sure you put some on your wooden dowel or your rod or whatever you're using for this and put it in nice and snug. If you don't want it to be flailing about inside, you want it stuck. So once you do that, we will do exactly the same on the other side. 
Just take it nice and slow and make sure you wait a good amount of time for the contact glue to dry before sticking it all back together. So there we go, we have it all there. Look, it's nice and flexible and strong. Moving on back to our template and we are going to trim the top bit off and we are going to trim the two circles, the one by my finger and the one at the back of the grip. We're also going to cut the circular bit in the middle out too. And then we're going to use our pen and we are going to draw around the template just so we can line up where the details are later. I then cut out the hole at the bottom. 100% I did it by hand with a knife. I did not use any sort of power tool to get that perfect circle. Oh, I'm just being lazy. Just allow me to have this one guys please. <laughs> but on this one I'll be I'll use my knife, don't worry. So we're going to do a 45 degree cut and we're going to do it all the way around. Take it nice and slow and let the blade do it, do all the work for you. And we're just going to slowly glide it around the corner. It's going, it's going to resist a little bit. Just be careful for your fingers and then the blade will just simply follow through. Nice and easy and careful. Then we can use a knife and we're going to cut around this bit but don't cut all the way through just cut about halfway about five millimeters in the left side and the right side and follow the line so now we're going to use this big chunky knife <laughs> so yeah be really careful with your fingers just you know you don't want to cut yourself so just use your fingers just just to guide it in and then move your fingers away and let the blade just do its thing and guide itself into the foam. You want to cut away about five millimeters so that's about half the thickness of the slab of foam and you want to do this on both sides. This is very like dangerous so take it nice and easy and if you don't feel comfortable doing this you can just dremel it all out. It'll take a little bit longer but at least you know it's just a little bit safer but I've been doing this for years so I'm pretty confident in doing that. So after that, you get it's kind of a bit rough, but it's fine because we're just going to dremel it down anyway. So we're going to move on to a dremel. So grab your dremel and put a drum sanding bit on, and just slightly go over around the whole entire edge, and make sure the three layers we glue together are uniform around the edge. We are then going to just let the dremel do its work. It's you know. It, it wants to go that direction, let go that direction, just make sure you've got control and we're going to slowly trim the edges, just give it a nice bevel all the way around. Take your time in this and make sure you wear your respirator and goggles because you don't want foam dust in your eyes and you certainly don't want to breathe foam in, it's very toxic, it can cause all sorts of health conditions so I urge you please wear a respirator. As you can see, my hand is covered in foam dust and that's what your lungs will look like if you don't wear a mask, so please wear a mask. So I'm going a little bit harder on the edges now, doing a nice 45 degree angle, bevel all the way around. So we'll just give it a nice rounded edge. And we're also going to clear up the grip bit a little bit where the uh, fingers go. And we're also going to bevel around the top of the axe to give it a nice separation where we put the asset. So make sure it's uniform all the way around. We're now doing the grip bits. So that's why I said don't worry about it being the perfect cut because we're gonna go all the way over with the drummer. So take your time, it took me about 40 minutes doing all this general work and I nicely compressed it in a couple of minutes for it. So once you've done with that, we can move on to the next bit. So we're going to widen that circle up a little bit of the Dremel. Uh, the Dremel will do its own thing again, it wants to go in that direction, let it go in that direction. Kind of just, just follow the Dremel. The Dremel will do its own thing. And then we're going to get a stone bit and we're going to go through this little middle section just to tidy it up a little bit. And then we're going to hit it with a hot air gun all around the prop and in the center bit. I'm going to put my finger here just to shape it because I've lost the roundedness of it. 
So you get it really hot and then push your finger into it. You can you can reform the foam into any shape you want. Just be careful not to burn yourself. Moving on, we're going to use a jewel bit on our Dremel or use any sort of similar shape bit in your Dremel. And we're just going to follow the template. And where the circles are on the grip, we're just going to add holes. Make sure they're in the centre because you want to get them really precise. And we'll be matching this on the other side. The reason why we're drilling holes is to guide the ball Dremel bit we're going to use in the second. So bear with me and I'll explain as we go. So we've got the ball Dremel bit. You can use a steel bit, a stone ball bit, and we're just going to use the holes as a guide and push them through. Like I said before, let the Dremel do its work, you don't have to force it through. And there we go, we're just going to do this on the left side and the right side. And we're going to use the heat gun just to open them up a little bit and to seal them in all the details. So now we're going to move to the axe head. So this bit is a bit tricky, so that's why I left it a little bit later on the video. Just so you get a little bit of practice. So we're going to use the template just to make sure it's lined up properly. And we're going to stick the first bit on. We're going to make sure there's lots and lots of contact cement on this because it needs it. Make sure you do at least two layers, let five minutes dry, do another layer. We want to get full coverage on this and slowly put on. We're going to kind of put it on and wrap it around at the same time. So we're going to do it nice and slow. We use our hands to push it in and we use a heat gun to get it in shape as well. So get it nice and hot and it will stick a little bit. Don't worry about fingerprint marks. You can use heat gun and it disappears again. <laughs> So we're just going to work with it for a couple of minutes and then we're going to use our Dremel just to tidy up the edges and give it a uniform look. And we're just going to add those little chip marks you find in the game and we're just going to just put little triangle cuts and pull them away. So we're going to use our Dremel just to rough up the edges a little bit. I'm not going to go too crazy here. You could do it sharper, but as it's a foam prop, I don't want it sharp. It's going to be bouncing on people's heads. So use the heat gun just to uh, just to seal all those details in. You can do it to any desire you want. So the um, texture of the grip has this kind of like it kind of looks like a cat's chew. That so I kind of get your knife and just kind of start poking these little tiny little holes and go over them with your heat gun just to expand it and seal the detail in. Afterwards, we're gonna get some tin foil or some aluminium tape, scrunch it all up, and we're gonna heat up the foam again, and then we're gonna pat it on like that, give it a bit of texture. So it's got some rough parts in the texture as I'm looking at. So kind of just stamp it in there. I've done a little bit too much, and I use my heat gun just to take off a little bit. As you can see, it's achieved a nice, like, rubbery effect on the whole prop. I've changed the texture up towards the top a bit. Just, just make sure the little nick, the little cat bites on your prop is just on the black bottom half. So now we're going to use a Dremel and get the last little bit of details in. So using the drum bit, and we're just going to go hard onto the circle. Just push it in, and it should leave this shape. So, Flexi Paint were wonderful enough to send me the, this nice little sample pack. So we're going to be using black Flexi Paint to seal the layers off the foam. 
So we're just putting a little bit in the plastic cup and then we'll get a foam brush and we'll brush it on. So I'm only going to be brushing the black parts on the black parts, if that makes sense. So I'm just doing a black base coat and just putting it all on there and trying to like put it on in a way that it doesn't show a texture. So I'm just kind of dabbing it on, making sure there's no brush strokes or anything. And I'm sure you don't want to see paint dry, so I'm going to do a couple of coats off camera. It's a good thing of flexi paint you can mix with your assisting paints. So I've got a white flexi paint, and if I mix my just my plain acrylic yellow, I can make a yellow flexi paint. So brilliant! Love, I love how you can do that. So I'm just going to mix it nice and far away, and I'm using my foam brush again and do a couple of layers. So yellow is a bit of a pain to paint with, but after loads and loads of coats, you get a nice vibrant yellow. So I'm going to do that off camera because I'm sure you don't watch paint dry. <laughs> so moving on, we are going to do the silver. So as you can see, we are just doing base coats. So once we've got all the base coats and nice and vibrant, we can go over and start tidying up. So once all the base coats are done, I did about five coats in total. So I'm just going to get the red that I made with white flexi paint and just plain red acrylic. And I'm just going to dab it on the edge because I want to get that pattern from the in-game where it's slightly worn off. So I'm just using the sponge to the edges and then I'm going to fill the rest with a paintbrush. This only took about three coats for the red. So we are going to do some weathering. So I've got watered down flexi paint and I'm just going to get my chip brush and just dab it all around the prop. And then I'm going to use tissue or a rag to uh, just wipe most of it off and give it like leave behind enough for a grime texture. So looking at the reference photos, this is very grimy and messy. So I actually painted one of my fingers black with uh, black red paint and I'm just going to smidge it on there. Just to get a rough idea of the shape. I'm just going to take it off a little bit, blend it in. And use my fingers just to smidge it in a little bit more. So I'm just going to add some black in there to give it like a panel line effect. And I'm just going to go over the whole prop again and just kind of go at it as much or as little weathering you want. But according to my references, this is actually pretty dirty. And I think the effect worked very well. So I'm just going to use my black paint and just, just go over the details and just paint this bit black and there should be a bit on the top of the axe head what you can paint black as well. And just like that we have completed the axe from Halo 3 Master Chief Collection and I, I really like how this one turned out. So I'm just going to do some close-ups with my other camera because this camera is not really good for this kind of stuff but anyway thank you so much for watching please subscribe like and comment and let me know if you want to see more of these kind of tutorial type videos for the future and i'll see you very soon so two penny props out <laughs>